Praise the Lord, saints. What a fabulous day. Beautiful family. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. We are Julie Bloom Ministries, taking the gospel to the nations, reaching about three and a half billion every day through radio, TV, and the internet. So to God be the glory for that. I welcome you, and I pray you're really ready to get in today to today's message because we are going to break some things today. We're going to shatter some things and we're going to claim forth our breakthrough today by the words that we speak in Jesus name. Now, you know that what to do with the social media, like, click, share, please do all of those things. We need the Bible and God's word to be shared throughout the world. There is a move against this precious word. We are not going to be canceled. We are not standing for it. This world will never, or this word will never be canceled. And before I really get into praying today, I'm just going to warn you, if you're easily triggered, I pray that you pray off that spirit of offense because we're going to get into truth and it's only the truth that will set you free. If you're easily triggered, well, then you're not going to get free and you you need to get free. So let's pray. Father, today I give you the praise and the glory for this word. I speak it forth that every word is filled with hope, filled with peace, filled with breakthrough by you. I thank you, Father, that there are no disruptions, no distractions, that every single thing that needs to go forth will go forth as it must. I thank you, Father, that, that there's no lighting issues, but we thank you for the light. I thank you that there's no camera equipment issues, that there are no issues, no background noises, no falls, no stumbles, no nothing in the name of Jesus. I thank you that there is no corrupt or irrelevant communication no interfering spirits, and nothing will prevent this word from being what you need it to be to free us all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, as we get into the word, I'm going to tell you something that you need to really understand. And it's kind of obvious, but it's still very true. Your body cannot go where your mind hasn't been. Your body cannot go where your mind hasn't been. Now, in the first portion of this series about what complaining does to your, to your soul, your body, and your spirit, or your spirit, body, soul, whichever, I'm following the Holy Spirit's lead, the soul, when it, when it engages in complaining, it just overrides everything. People are led by their flesh when they continue to complain. And, and you will never get free in a spirit of complaining, mumbling, grumbling, whining, so on and so forth. And we're going to get to that in the spirit side. But today I want to focus on what complaining does to your body. See, your body is a temple. So why is it that people, when they buy cars, that they treat their cars better than their body? bodies that are a temple. Oh, look at my car. Got to wax her. Got to do this, 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 this. Oh, take care of her. All of these things, name her. But then when it comes to their own bodies, they defile them through carnal things. So the first thing that complaining does, and if you don't get this, or if you're around complainers, you really need to share this message with them and then, and then get, the, get away from them because they, they, their, their behavior will not help you. Now, complaining drains your energy. That's the first thing. So how can a body go and do what it needs to for the Lord if the complaining is operating against it. Have you ever been around someone who complains? It's incessant. It's most of the time people that complain also live in chronic complaining as well. But when they're finished, don't you feel drained? When they're finished or when you're finished complaining, how tired are you? I remember when I was in college, you all know I was homeless at 15. And, and when I got into college, I started at age 17, started college, graduated at 20. And when I was in college, I worked full time to get through college. I worked at times three jobs and paid for school. And a cousin of mine let me live with her. And I remember the day when I got home from school, cause I would work, I would go to school from eight to 12 and then I would work one to nine. I worked retail. And I remember telling her, blah, 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 blah. And she's finally cut me off. And she said, tell me something positive today. Crickets. And then I shared, well, you know what? I hit all green lights. Because I, 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 
I went to college at a, I guess you could call it a community college. It was a university, but I had to drive. I didn't live on campus. And, and so within that, the only thing really that I could come up with was that I, that I just hit all green lights. She said, good, that's a start. And, and I still remember it to this day because of the fact that it had such a profound impact. Not then, I just thought she was just whack, whack, whack. You know, she's very much the, the Bible. Oh, you're going to hell, are you? Oh, having sex outside of marriage. That's why you're sick. Going to hell. Going to rot if you don't deal with I mean, just you, just, you just knew. She was the one in the family nobody wanted to be around. Bless her heart. Love her. Now, energy drained drained, drained. The, the things that I was bringing through complaining were draining her energy. Years later, probably about 2012, I bought a clock. And I'm going somewhere with this. I bought this clock. It's probably about three feet all around. And it weighs about 45 pounds. And it isn't a clock that you can just stick the, stick the screw in the wall and just hang it. No, 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 no. This is the clock that you have to have one, one click, uh, one nail here and one, or one screw and one screw, and it has to be level and even. And if you can get this side, then you got to really fight to get this side. And so I'm trying to hang this clock. I've already, I, I, I just am so beside myself because I can't get the second one in. So I just, I just set it down and I just, well, Lord, if you gave me a husband, I would have to go through this all by myself. And I've been praying for you for a husband for, and by 2012, it had been like five years. I mean, my prayer, my prayer for a husband's old enough to drive. Okay. So, so just recognize that. So we weren't that far in, but I'm just, Lord, I don't have this and I don't have this and this wouldn't be so hard if only you would do this and if only you would do that and Lord, this is not my fault and it just blah, 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 blah. and I just worked myself into a tizzy, wasn't crying and then fussing and furthermore, God, you did not and I'm believing and that and then it just went on and then I was so exasperated, I just need to take a nap. And finally, after my nap, I mean, I was so drained. Who isn't drained when? Because I'm going to get into what else it does to the body, but it drained me. Now, good thing God can't be drained, right? And so, exhausted from my, from my tirade, God says, change your perspective. So then I started praying for the strength of an ox. <laughs> now I can move couches. Woohoo! I can move things that that uh, I've been want. Don't touch! Don't move that. That's heavy. And it's like just pick it up and throw it in the back of the vehicle, and off we go, right? And so, so my energy no longer. I I remembered that because the complaining does nothing to boost your energy. You can be the healthiest person, but if you have no energy, you're not doing anything. If your energy is not focused in the right direction, you won't accomplish anything. Complaining drains your energy. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, it drains your energy. Period. The second thing that it does is it puts stress on the body. Now these are in no particular order, although they all connect. Complaining puts stress on the body. Most diseases are rooted in stress, worry, and anxiety. Complaining increases stress, worry, and anxiety, which leads to hypertension, heart disease, candida, fibromyalgia, and on it goes. The relationships that women have with other women, mother to daughter and mother-in-laws and outlaws, so on and so forth, or in-loves, whichever, are rooted the, the the those relationships if they are unhealthy guess where your your ovarian and breast cancers come from the second the first thing is actually abortion dateline had a series on this back in like 2004 that that the number one cause of of breast cancer was abortion which would make sense because you're stopping all of the production of what needs to go through the mammary glands but that's a whole sec that's a whole separate thing the stress on the body from complaining does not breed anything good. This is why when you see people that will try every single diet to lose weight, but they never do, well, you won't. 
If you've got candida and you've got fibromyalgia and you've got arthritis, which is rooted in, in bitterness and, and, and forgiveness, but, er, and, and yes, that, and then um, um, osteo, osteoporosis, the bones, the brittle bones is all rooted in, in bitterness, but complaining, when you live in it, you can never see anything good, and the impact that it has on the bodies, it creates these things, even if you diet, you still have the same issue. The diet will not change what's breeding by the dendrites in your body of the words that you speak. You will not get out of it. So the diet craze and phase is really worthless because it doesn't work. You will be counteracting what you are attempting to do. So candida is a yeast infection that is rooted and grounded in stress. And one of the culprits are the words that you speak. Complaining does nothing healthy for your body. And we'll get to the spirit. Don't you just wait. So the health ailments from what we speak is incredible. We already know that laughter is the best medicine. Okay. And it's a broken heart that, that causes the brittle bones as well. Proverbs tells us this. So when we look at our society, a society of complainers on social media, what do you think Twitter is? They do nothing but complain about Twitter. Everyone complains and complains and complains. And all it is is just a complaint fest. And the people get angry and their bodies start to have that cortisol drip. And then they live like it. And then it, it breeds. It is an infection that takes over the entire body. There is no way to get out of it, out of that infection until you cut it off, period. It's like, we're, it's really worse than sugar. It's worse than sugar. Sugar is poison. We already know this. That's why every food is laced with sugar to get you to eat more of it and get you fat along with the carrageenan. That's, and you can start reading that sour cream, cottage cheeses, yogurts, and it's even in some of the chicken and it's used to make the chickens fat or plump as they might say. Well, if you eat a plump chicken, don't you think you're probably gonna turn plump? This is why 12 year olds look like they're 18. Now, when, when we start to look at the stress on the body, Chronic complaining will destroy everything within your body. There is no way around it until it's out. Now, what's interesting about this is that most people don't realize that they are complainers because it should just be the gospel according to fill in the blank. And if it's not, then they're going to they're gonna have a go at you and let you know, not recognizing that their complaining is keeping them living in the bondage of sin because we are told to put away all filth and malice in the book of Romans. So if we're not doing that, then now we see that we're moving in a way to be moving away from the things of God. So you cannot really claim Psalm 103, it is all well in my soul. Well, it's not going to be so long as you're complaining. And your body will not be well either because you are counteractive. You are counteracting everything you're doing. Which is interesting, why would you pray and then turn around and complain? Your prayers have no effect. This is why in the big scheme of things, I have, I don't really pray as much for people as much as I used to because I listen to what they speak and they're counteracting what it is that they're believing God for. So why would I pray for you? You are, you're cursing what you say you believe in God for. So I'm not going to waste interceding for you to go before God for you to then curse it and then be sick in your body. See, no, I want, I want to speak the truth to you so you can, you can start speaking and get your mind aligned, which I'm going to get to that in just a second. Now, the next thing that occurs when you complain, what happens to your body is the emotional roller coaster. So what happens, and just like with me when I shared with you when I was complaining to God about, well, you know, I don't have this and I don't have that, Simmer down, child. <laughs> or was that when you start moving led by your emotions, your body's going to look like it. You're going to feel like it. Your words will be a display of all of those things. Now, it's not likely that you are ever around someone who complains and it makes you feel great. Think about that. 
And most complainers bring with them not only complaining spirit, but a draining spirit. There's pig spirits, vampire spirits, energy sucking spirits, nibbling spirits. There are many types siphoning spirits where they just come and they just, they just suck every single thing out of you. Your body will feel it. Now your emotions as well because what will happen is that if you are not aware of this and you begin to be ruled by your emotions and then you're drained well you know what it's really hard to do anything for God when you're too tired when you complain all the time about how bad things are well then the cross means absolutely nothing to you you can't tell me otherwise because you're going against why Jesus died so you could be free so you're trapped in your own self and your body's gonna look like you're wearing a straitjacket it's a very big deal and most people don't see it. How often, how often, and I shared this the last time, how often do we hear people just, oh, well, you know, this pastor didn't do this in this message and he should have done this, he should have done that, and they just didn't do this, and you didn't do this, and you know what, you haven't done this, and you, 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 yeah. And the three fingers are pointing back at you. Start picking up the mirror and looking at it. See, but your emotions are going to be out of balance. As your emotions get out of balance from moving in a way of complaining, then guess what will happen? Your energy, the stress, most likely, you probably if you live in the Western society, will go, go, go get on some form of medication that will cause you to have uh, emotional tirades or will cause you to gain weight, which means now you're going to have more stress, which means you're going to be complaining more, which means now you solved nothing. You did not get to the root of your complaining, which is a heart issue. What's in the heart comes out the mouth, Solomon tells us. So if you're not dealing with why you're complaining and repenting of it, you really need to. Because our society is filled with enough of them, and it should not ever be that the Christians are the rudest. And I just heard it, heard it spoken. Somebody called me. This was yesterday. That that another pastor, and I remember hearing a I remember hearing a famous preacher teach on this years ago. How when how Disneyland back in the day used to have used to have Christian Day. Now they just have Celebrate Sin Day. But they used to have, with all the pedophiles in the tunnels, you guys probably, you don't know about that. Yeah, don't take your kids there. It's disgusting. However, with that said, they hated, they hated Christian Day. And the restaurant servers hated it too. Because the Christians don't tip. They're the rudest. They are the mouthiest. They are the most ungrateful, they offer the least grace to anyone, and the most impatient. That day for Disneyland and the restaurants around, that, that's the day that they had the most people call in sick because of the, the self-entitled spoiled bratness of Christians. And I remember when I first heard that, I was like, not me. <laughs> I found that offensive because I'm like, well, I'm a Christian. I just don't go to Disneyland. But wait a minute. Why is it that we have Jesus Christ who died on the cross, but yet we just live in chronic complaining? It's the first thing to really start investigating. You are where you are by the words that you speak. And most, most people that live in chronic complaining are miserable, as rightly they should, because they're speaking over themselves. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So what else will happen? Okay, so now, now we've got an emotional tirade. Emotions, 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 emotions. It's probably not what, what, what your doctor would say because your doctor's probably not going to ask you how often do you complain. Your doctor's going to ask you, do you have any heart palpitations? And if you say yes, well, then you must need this. Never mind, your heart palpitating is because you complain so much and you just have gotten yourself to such a level of utter emotional exhaustion that your body's set to shut down. And the body will shut down because you will be utterly alone because you will have destroyed every relationship by complaining about everything. See? And then you got the aloneness, the grief, the sorrow, and then the blame and the, and the, the deflection of responsibility. Then you know what? Oh, everyone left. Well, they should. If they, had, if they had any ounce of wisdom after the first or second or third admonishment tells us what? Second Timothy have nothing to do with them. So if you have a chronic complainer, you just walk away. Here you go. Here's the book. Read it. Sayonara. Because if you don't, you will be living in that. And you, precious child, do not have time for the ways of the carnal Christians who refuse to crucify their flesh. Just saying. Just saying. We have got to start 
speaking the word in all things. We have got to start living in righteousness. You can't play church. We've done that. Look where the church is. We got to be the church and start speaking the word because as a man thinketh, so he is. So if you're living and complaining, you surely are not thinking on the higher things of this word. Oh no, you're looking at your flesh, filling your flesh, feeding your flesh, playing all kinds of games and it's witchcraft and you need to stop it. We just don't see it that way, do we? And I'm only here delivering this message because it was my pastor that said, hey, you know what I'm hearing? And I'm like, tell me. Oh, I'm hearing a lot of complaining. And it set me free. It set me free. Because most people don't recognize that they complain just like most people won't or don't recognize they have unforgiveness issues. One of the hardest subjects to teach because most people, when you tell them you teach on forgiveness and your radio and TV program is called Living in Forgiveness, their first thing is, I don't have forgiveness issues. Who told you that? You or the Holy Spirit? Because I live like that too. I mean, I'm just, I'm just putting it all out there today because you know what? I'm here telling you these things because I had to walk through it and, and it's not fun. It is not fun, but it sets us free. Now, the next thing, when we look at our next point, we're going to get into point number four is that it reduces your focus. Turn with me to second Corinthians. Your focus, you're just, your focus is completely gone. The cross means nothing. You were the center of your life, and nothing about it is good, nor will it ever be. And it should be 2 Corinthians, let me see here what my scripture is, in chapter 10. Okay. Fifteen. Okay. Now, listen to this. I love this. Now, I'm just going to share this one with you. Twelve. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Well, duh. If you're looking at yourself as your own measuring stick... You're delusional. The measuring stick should be that of Christ. So if your own measurement is based upon your own self and your only self, the only thing you're focusing on is on yourself and nothing is ever good enough and you are your own measurement and you fall short. And we all fall short, right? Well then, well then where are you going? You just missed the whole thing. But it continues on. I mean, I just, I just happen to see that. Now, 15, neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. Okay. Where you focus on will take you where you go. There, there is a focus here. Now I want to continue on. So that we can preach the gospel. For we do not want to boast about <clears throat> other work already done in someone else's territory, but let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom commends, who the, excuse me, whom the Lord commends. Chronic complainers or complaining shifts your focus only to yourself. I did this. I did this. This isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. They can't do this because they're not me. And this and this. The body then has a shift in the direction of where it's going to go because the body cannot go where the mind doesn't bend. So your body is going to respond or react by your focus. Their focus is on moving toward the greater things of God. Put away all filth. Put away all malice. It is your responsibility to get yourself right in the things of the Lord. Every complaint will only move you further away from it. And you, you will look like what you talk about. And I'm going to be real clear with you. If you have people in your life that complain, it's a familiar spirit. Complaining is a familiar spirit. And if you are not aware of it, you will become, it will become you. It'll take over. 
and you will begin to operate like those that complain, and your body will be drained, your outreach will be drained, your relationships will be drained. This is why when people go to work, it's very important that if you're around the people at work and you might say, well, yeah, uh, I don't go to work, or, or yeah, I try not to, to engage with the people at work. But think about pre-COVID, we'll just say, that people go to work and there's somebody always complaining. And then when you get home, you're tired and drained. So what do you do? When you come home or on your way home, you cut the soul ties to your company. I cut the soul ties to the conversations. I cut the soul ties to the complaining. I cut the soul ties to the familiar spirits. I cut the soul ties to that environment because you don't want to get in your home environment and then bring that trash with you. Every conversation, before I go into it, I pray and when I, when I leave, I cut it, I have to. Because if I carried around what everybody attempted to put upon me, I would I would have already been buried. It would have been a it would have just been a garbage dump, of of spiritual trash. And I can't accept it. And many people don't. When you when you start moving in that direction of what you will and will not tolerate, you're going to move in a different way. But whatever you tolerate will continue. You have to train people how to treat you. And most people that aren't trained in any level of respect will treat you like garbage because that's how they treat themselves. And through the complaining, you'll see it. And I'm going to show you a couple other things here. So your focus must always be upward. You know, every day in our 12 o'clock prayer call, and you, I invite you to join. You can go to julieblow.com. It's posted every day. There's a list of all the countries. So we welcome you from many nations. And, and we nail to the cross those things that we need to get rid of every day. And you'll begin to see that when you look up, you see Jesus' arms spread. But when you look beyond that, you see into the heavenlies. When, when we live in, in a focus of complaining, you can't even see the cross. You can't even see his arms around you. And many people are crying out for healing. Well, no, you need healing in your mouth. You need healing to shut up. You need healing in a way that will, that will move your words to a place to say, well, I'm, if, if you're going to proclaim... And we're going to get into now, I'm going to move to my next point, because this is all going to tie in. Retraining your brain. Complaining retrains your brain. So if in one breath, you're praying that God will heal you, and then you go to the doctors, and all you do is complain about the doctors, well, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They're not qualified. I need the best. This is not working. These people just don't have a clue. They didn't do this. They just, this is, this place has nothing. You know what? I need to go to the Mayo Clinic. I can't get anything done. This is it's just not going to work for me. And uh, well, then guess what you're doing? And I'm kind of being a little facetious in this, but, but and I'm not making fun of anybody because we've all probably been there in, in some way, form or fashion. But check this out. It's this. Is that when you believe God for a healing, I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. And there are people that are participating in moving you toward that. If you're speaking against them, um, you got a problem. You need to pray them in. God can use anyone at any time for anything. He used a Muslim mechanic to fix my vehicle to the tune of $1,000 for free. God can use anyone to bless us. We got to get out of that limited thinking that, well, you know what? If they're not this, I can't, I just can't handle, you know what? They're in the world. Yeah, well, okay. And guess what? Blessings come from the world, folks. I'm all in. I'm receiving that. And you know what? Most of the people in the world complain less than the Christians. So we have to really start waking up and saying, okay, well, if I need a healing, I need to pray for everyone that I'm doing business with in, in every hospital so that they are being used to, to get me my healing. Thank you, Lord. You did it. But now i got to move through to pray that every single person who touches me is on that path. But if we don't do that and we're speaking against those that are helping us, well, what do you expect? See? We don't, we, don't even, we don't even understand the impact that it will continue to have on our bodies and our brains. So what happens is this. When the words begin, because remember I said, your body cannot go where your mind hasn't been. It all starts in the thoughts that we think. We are told, take every thought captive. Take every thought captive. Now, if we're taking every thought captive, okay, um, well, then that would mean 
that we would be speaking that which is of God. We're taking those thoughts captive. Why must you take the thought captive? Because there's a concept called a current thought. And a current thought will have descending current thoughts. And it works like this. Have you ever not been hungry until you're on a highway and then you see a restaurant you like? And then all of a sudden you want the fanny, the, the chocolate fudge brownie delight or the barbecue or the chicken wings. And you weren't hungry, but then there's a thought. And then there's a thought, a thought, a thought, a thought, a thought that all comes with it. Those are descendant thoughts. If you do not take the first thought captive immediately, then the next thoughts will take over. They all will then be connected into the brain to start to then transform the hypothalamus, which is what connects the mind and the body. Then it all impacts your limbic system. So every thought that you think has a direct correlation to how you feel. Over a hundred diseases and illnesses are caused by what you think. As a man thinketh, he is. What are you thinking? Many Christians don't realize this, and many even people in the world don't realize it, but you know what, I'm not interested in the people of the world unless you're gonna to come to Christ and then I'll tell you everything you need to know. But, well, you get the idea. So what happens is that the body, the, the brain, your brain will start to have a transformed RNA. It doesn't mess as much with the DNA, but the RNA. So your brain starts to be transformed. We are told in Romans 12 too, do not conform to the ways of the world. Well, we'll just go here. Everybody, oh, I know, I know this one. I already know the scripture. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to show you something. So funny how often we think we know something so we don't pay attention to it. Which is an interesting thing that I will get to um, in just a second. All right. Okay. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You cannot do that until you've overcome. That's the problem. Most people born that most people that be, that get born again are are yes, new creations in Christ. But you have to not not conform to the pattern of the world. There's also a spirit of the world as well, which is in it every single thing that 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 the world would would deem appropriate. We've come to a place where we think evil is good and treat and treat good as evil. Look at how opposite. And there is a, there is an opposite spirit. You can kind of see it as, as you go about. You're going to see a lot more things as you, as you go forward. Praise God. So as the thoughts you think become you, you will live them. Period. So what does this mean? This means exactly that. You are training your brain. Now, what's fascinating is this, is that, is that we only use about 10% of our brain. So what's happening with the other 90%? It's not engaged. It's not engaged. So we're not really even all that aware of what exactly is happening. Have you ever thought to think about what you think about? On average, adults think thir have 30, make 35,000 decisions every day. Are you aware of them? Think about that. Are you aware of the decisions that you're making? Society and its mind control want you not engaged or aware of your mind. See, many people think that 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 well, the 5% control, the 5% the control everything, and it's really like less than that. But the only reason why they do is because they think different. And it has nothing to do with money. It has to do with the way that you think. If you live in complaining, well, then you know what? You're part of the 95% that are sitting doing nothing. When you get out of that and you crucify your flesh, the mind and your body, your mind and your body, and you overcome, guess what's going to happen? You are going to be transforming your mind in accordance with scripture. You will be thinking first these things. What does it say? Matthew 6, 33. Seek first his kingdom, not your kingdom, his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom and all shall be given unto you. Well, if you're complaining, you're obviously not seeking God for anything. You have no peace in God, which means also the Holy Spirit is not present. 
So your body's going to have an impact. Most complainers also end up with foul mouths. They speak filthy words and then they complain and everything is negative. And you can, you see where I'm going. Look at all of the stuff around you. And the more angry people get, the more filthy the words get, the more frustrated they become, the more angry they get, the more, the more frustrated they are. And you know what? There's no peace, which means that there's going to be more sickness, more disease elevating. There's no Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is grieved by filthy, grievous language. And he's, and he doesn't want to be involved in that conversation and so the people are really left to their to their own desolation by their own doing because they didn't retrain their brain they did not take responsibility you cannot move in that direction it tells us this in Romans now I got to find words out in Romans so give me just a second but it tells us you know, many people talk about the fornicators and the sexual idolaters not getting in not not inheriting the kingdom but neither will neither will the slanders, the gossipers, or anyone else. Well, I need to find it. But I came across this. Listen to this. In, in, I want to start here. Um, come with me to Romans because I want to show you something. This is something that, that I, I prayed for many years ago. Just turn to Romans. So, and I'm not coming against anyone when I'm saying this. Maybe this is you, maybe it's not. I just want you to recognize that your brain needs to be retrained. Now, you already have habits. You already have habits, patterns, traditions, and routines. You already have them embedded in your brain. Just as easy to create a good habit as it is a bad one. You already most likely have some things that need to be corrected. So how do we do that? Well, we pray for that. But if you never change what's going on in your brain because the stress and the impact of the stress and every single thing else, and then the sickness and disease, then it's, why is God doing this to me? Well, God's not doing anything. What are you speaking? You're speaking against the word of God. Hello? The thoughts that you think, sin begins in the thought, Solomon tells us. So what you're thinking is the sin, which separates Complaining is a sin. It denies the cross, period. It takes away what Jesus did to set you free. It keeps you captive and it keeps you sick and ailing and miserable. And you already know it. I don't need to tell you guys anything. You probably already know all this. But Paul, Romans 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel. The gospel he promised beforehand through the prophets in the scripture regarding his son, who at his earthly life was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power. The spirit of holiness, complaining and holiness do not go together. Because they are the exact opposite. Holiness is through this word where when it gets tough, you speak the word where, where it is, where you're tired, you speak the word. See, I speak, I, I speak many things daily and we'll get to that in just a second because it's from this word. Complaining is not of God's word. You're not speaking God's word. You're speaking your flesh. And what's happening is you are rebirthing your flesh every single day. And in that each day you get worse. You get sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. And you can't get out until you shut your mouth and repent for the complaining. Because you know what? Jesus died so you could be free. Not so you could be a blubbering complainer, whining, griping, mumbling, and grumbling. It took the Israelites 40 years. What do you think that did to their bodies? So let me tell you what it works like. And I'm going to give you some examples of what keeps you there. You ever heard people say, I'm so sick of, I'm so sick of this. And these are, these are, I'm not cursing, Lord, these are examples. I'm so sick of this. Really? Why are you so sick? You just said, I'm so sick. Oh, that's a curse. Hmm. Oh, I hate, I hate, blah, 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 blah. Yep, now you got that curse. I hate. I hate this car. I hate this place. I hate this marriage I'm in. I hate singlehood. I hate this. I hate the weather. I, you know it all. You probably have already heard it from someone. You know what? I hate. Yeah, break that off in the name of Jesus. Break that off. Oh, I can't. I can't believe that. Why? I can't believe. Well, you know what? You just, you just put a curse on yourself. I can't believe. Yes, you can. You surely can. Or the, 
you never, or I never, I never get anything. I never get anything good. Well, you know what? You never will because you keep cursing yourself, complaining about what you don't have. And I've already shared with you, I came here to Dallas, Texas to start a ministry with a $200 gift card. I slept on a, a first, first few days, I slept on, on coats that I had in my, in, my, in my car. And I came with a Mini Cooper. Not like you're going to pack a whole lot of stuff in that, let's be clear. Three changes of clothes, and that was it for two months. All my belongings were stuck on a moving truck in the hottest part of the summer, the hottest time. Lots I could have complained about. Oh, and I, 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 I regret. Well, yeah, it's going to have you living in it. I'm so sad. It breaks my heart. Well, that's a curse too. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? God didn't make you sorry. Stop saying that. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for a pardon for? He already died on the cross for you. You don't need a pardon. You already have it. See, these are some things that we really don't recognize. And I've already told you, coach purse. Why would you buy coach when you're first class, saints? You're first class, honey. Mm-hmm. Yes, you surely are. You are first class. You are a limited edition. You are a limited resource. That's how significant you are. But when you deny how Jesus sees you, because you only focus on the outward, circumstantial carnality of this world, well, it's such a sad shame. Because why did Jesus die? Jesus paid a price. He paid a dear price. He paid, he paid more than what we could ever begin to think or imagine. And we really have no right to complain about anything. It should be whatever you will. I thank you for it. Whatever you will be done, help me to stand strong through this storm. I may not understand, but I'm going to praise you anyway. I'm not going to curse the Jesus that, that bore his sins so that I could be free and then, and, then, and then curse him by complaining about what he still didn't give me. Please sit down. It, it causes an imbalance in your entire body. If we're going to claim peace within ourselves, Psalm 103.3. I'm going to take you here. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord my soul and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Well, if you redeemed your life from your pit, from, redeemed your life from the pit, and you choose to complain, you put yourself back in the pit. That pit will overtake you. Go with me to uh, Third John, Three John. Three John two. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. You cannot have good health in imbalanced body. And it begins here. You cannot move in a way of having your body in perfect peace, complaining. Your body, your temple, you are destroying when you complain. It is an abomination to God to claim, my body is a temple, but let me destroy it with every word I speak. Let me deface it. Let me just put graffiti all over my body with my words about my situation, about this. And I remember years ago, and I've shared this with you before, when I was, I was on the phone with, with, my, with my Bible teacher, and I was in the Denver as a triangle, and I was driving through the triangle, and, uh, and, and I just remember some things that he was 
speaking to me about the direction that I was going to be going and, and that I needed to get myself in agreement. And see, when we say in Amos 3.3, 3, how can two, two walk together if they're not in agreement? Well, how can you walk with Jesus if you're not in agreement? How is it that it always comes back to, I always have four minutes left. Good thing I'm at the end. No clue. This, this, I just rebuke this pattern in Jesus' name. So when it comes to your body's balance, you have to start speaking to get your body in agreement. You have to start rebuilding the temple. You have to remove the complaining away. You've got to get it out of your body. You've got to get it out. You've got to realign your mind and your focus and get your energy back. You've got to get your groove back. Stella did it. You can do it too. You are a new creation in Christ. So if you're going to say you are a new creation in Christ and then you complain, you are not a new creation. You are an old creation and you're living, denying the new creation. So how do you do this? You start speaking the word over yourself. You first repent of all the complaining, ask the Lord to heal your body, and then move in a way where you only speak good things. I am a child of God. I am an early riser. I speak that which is good. It is well in my soul. I walk in love and peace. I live stress-free. I love all my enemies, and my enemies love me. I get along well with others. And all of those things, I have a beautiful body. Whatever the things are, start speaking those things so you can start removing. It could be, you could, always, well, you know, it could be worse. Yes, it could be. Thank God that it's not. It's not the worst that's ever been for you. The only place you're going is up. The best is yet to come. Hello, look where you go when you die. How could you have a, any complaint? Like, it's only going to get better. So you must move in that direction. That's how you're going to get it done. How are you going to get it done? You're going to get your body back, and you're going to get a new perspective. So, Father, today I thank you for new perspectives. We thank you that we just put complaining to the cross. The foot of it, we nail it. We thank you for restoring our souls. We thank you for restoring our spirits and our bodies. Father, today we just purge that which is not of you, and we thank you for making the way for us. We thank you, Father, that we can see clearly, shift our perspective, shift our mindsets, help us to gain new, new, new ideas and thoughts. Father, I also speak it forth that we cut off the soul ties to the old patterns, the old habits. We cut the soul tie to complaining. We just cut it off. We rebuke it. It's bad. So, Father, we thank you for refreshing today. We thank you for renewing. And we thank you that we are free to love you. And we praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. He is so good. And he's worthy to be praised. You turn on that praise music. You, pr you put on soaking music when you're in traffic so you don't have to complain about it. You just do every single thing that you can to create an atmosphere of peace and of joy. Paint the wall pink. Who cares? I've done that, actually, and it was fabulous. Loved it. It was wonderful. Perfect. Whatever you need to do, you do it. Create that environment of peace, and you will live in it. Now, next week, we'll be getting into what it does to the spirit which is quite, there's so much within that too. So we pray every day at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. Visit us at julieblur.com for more. And if God tells you to be a giver, which I know he already has, then you give and you give where you're getting fed. And just know too, this ministry is always in need. We're, we're in need of donations. We're just in need of help, always. So you just be obedient. You love the Lord, love others, love you guys. And I'll be back with my next message. Bye.